Well, not a day goes by that we don't hear about some kind of problem in what we call endangered cities. Cities that could become failed cities like Baltimore and Detroit. Chicago is certainly one of them. We're talking about that today. But you have to put Seattle, Portland, uh, certainly Silicon Valley and uh, uh, San Francisco, Los Angeles, Detroit um, is a failed city, but we might talk about St. Louis and Milwaukee. There's just tons of tons of cities that are not favorable to investors and that people are leaving. So there's a demographic shift. And if you've got investment properties in any of these endangered cities, you have to ask yourself, why is that? So we've been talking about the fact that if you've got properties in Baltimore or in Detroit, these properties can take a severe decline. Now, we've talked about the fact that a lot of these um, commercial properties, these big towers in Baltimore and Detroit, and now even in some places in, in uh, San Francisco, where people are leaving, they refuse to come to the uh, central city. Well, the value is dropping like a rock in, the, in these investments. What are you to do? Now, you're probably not going to, most of our clients don't have towers, but you do have some rental properties. So it's not uncommon for our clients to have 5, 10, 15, 20, 30 properties. And they could be trapped in cities like Chicago. So let's just talk about Chicago. So if you've got a property in Chicago, you have to ask yourself, what is this going to look like five years from now? So let's just talk about doing a 1031 exchange because you can use a 1031 exchange, an IRC 1031 exchange, and transfer your ownership of a property in Chicago to Florida, Texas, or Arizona, and you defer all the capital gains. And they're cheap, cheap, cheap. Now, we do them all the time because we have a lot of people here in Phoenix moving from the West Coast. You know, they're getting out of Portland. They're getting out of Seattle. And if you're in, if you're in California, you have to ask yourself, what am I doing with my investments in California? Because the prospect is not good there. And it is absolutely glowing here in Phoenix, Arizona. But Florida, Texas, and Arizona are the big three. These are places that you want to go. Now, if you use a 1031 exchange, it is so simple. We do it with them all day, every day. They have some rules, easy rules to follow. So you need to sell the property. And when before you close on it, you employ a qualified intermediary. And you send the funds to the qualified intermediary. You have 45 days with which to locate a property. And then you have to close it. And when you go to closing, your, uh, your you know, qualified intermediary sends the money to closing. And away you go. This is real easy. Oftentimes what we're seeing in California is just sell one for $800,000 in California. You can buy two in Phoenix, Arizona for the same, uh, for the same kind of money. So that's typically buy one, sell one, buy two. And, and here's what it costs. It costs about $800 to sell one, 400 bucks per property that you buy. So if you just trade 800,000 to 800,000, it costs you 1200 bucks. And you go from having a property in Portland to having one in Peoria, Arizona, or Surprise, or Scottsdale, or um, you know Gilbert, or Chandler. So you get places that are just absolutely outstanding. Let's let you know what's going on here in uh, Scottsdale and, uh, and Phoenix. Now, we've identified these properties, Chicago, Milwaukee, Minneapolis, Los Angeles, San Francisco, Seattle, Portland, New York, New Jersey, Washington, D.C., of course, Philadelphia, but we don't, uh, you could put, uh, you could put um, several others in there. St. Louis would be one that comes to mind. So these are properties that the prospect for additional uh, uh, investment work is not good. So we, we call these endangered cities. So what do you think is going to happen in these, in these cities? You know, crime is rampant. You're having businesses leave. And so when the tax base leaves, those that are left behind have to pick up all the taxes. So you're guaranteed to have taxes rising. And then, of course, the people are left behind. They, they have more social services. So taxes just rise. You've got an antagonistic uh, governance. You've got uh, crime and people are leaving. So what do you think is going to happen? What do you think is going to happen with your property when you're in Chicago? You know, Walmart is, is leaving. You know, these, these places on the Miracle Mile in Lake Michigan are closing down. What do you think is going to happen to your property? 
So if you've got an opportunity for $1,200, you can get out. You go to my next slide here. Now, let's talk about some good things. I don't want to make a political statement, but we have 10 million people coming across our borders. Every last one of them is going to need a place to sleep. This is going to put enormous uh, pressure on already uh, short housing. Now, the problem with housing it is in the wrong places. You know, so we've got a demographic shift that's been going on for the last 40 years, but it has really accelerated in the last five or 10 years where you have people coming from the Rust Belt coming down to the Sun Belt. So they're going to South Carolina and North Carolina. They're going to Florida. They're going to Georgia. They're going to Texas. They're going to Arizona. They're going to Utah. And these are the places that really, really need housing. And they're going to need a lot of housing. So we have all these people coming across the borders. Plus, let me go by the next slide. I'll just tell you what we're talking about here is we've got Californians leaving. Californians are leaving California. They can't live there anymore because of crime, taxes, over-regulation. You know, it, it's just crazy. So if you're a business person in California, you need to start thinking, I need to get out. An IRC 1031 exchange is going to get you out without paying any taxes. You're not going to have a taxable event. Your capital gains get rolled over to the next property. And it's going to cost you about $1,200 to replace. You just need to get like for like. We do it every day of the week. We do it all the time. It's just a great vehicle to transfer your one property to another property, move your locations. Now, I'm telling you, if you're in California, California's going to become a third world country. They are way, way underwater with their budgets, like billions and billions of dollars. And they, don't, they refuse to quit spending. This is great for us here in, in Scottsdale, Arizona, and Phoenix, Arizona, because people are leaving. They're coming here. Let me go to my next slide. And this is what they're doing. So according to the National Association of Home Builders, uh, they estimate 4.4 million homes short. Now, a lot of these homes that are being built are already in areas that are starting to flood. Like there's a lot of them in Florida that eventually will get absorbed. But we got stuff in up, upper state Michigan in New York, in Maine, you know, in, in Boise, was uh, uh, Idaho, where it's cold, in all these places that people are leaving, that's where we've got plenty of housing, but we don't have them in Phoenix. At Fannie Mae is estimating we're going to need 7.3 million homes. And we've got all kinds of people coming across the border. They're all going to need a place to live. So we have an estimate here in Phoenix, Arizona, right now, that we're short 250,000 units. Now, we've got a lot of people living together. We got you got roommates, you've got mom and dad living with their kids and, and grandma and grandpa are in because of affordability. That is all going to change. But if you've got an investment property that's in Seattle that you're renting out, you can sell it in Seattle, bring it here to Phoenix, Arizona, and you can get into a much, much better uh, market. Same thing with if you're in Minneapolis. Why would you stay in Minneapolis when you're having problems in Minneapolis? Come to one of the Sunshine Belt. You can go to Florida, Texas, or Arizona. We'd love you to come here to Phoenix and pick up some of our shortage. Let me go to my next slide so you can look at this. Now, here's what's going on right now in Phoenix, Arizona. That's why I keep talking to you about how great it is here. So this is a screenshot of the uh, uh, Wall Street Journal's uh, documentary called The 17-Mile Stretch of Arizona Highway. It is literally booming. Things are slowing down. But businesses and warehouses are fleeing California and they're coming here to Arizona. You cannot get an industrial pad to build a warehouse. And we have we have 17 uh, warehouses of over 1 million square feet that are being under construction right now in uh, Phoenix, Arizona. Now we've had Wolf come here, Sub-Zero's here, Amazon's here, Dick Sporting Goods here, UPS, Red Bull, Red Bull. Just have tons and tons of people coming here because it's easy to do business. We're a, we're a business-friendly state. You can buy a house here in surprise for three hundred sixty to four hundred thousand dollars in a good school district in a crime-free neighborhood and very affordable, nice three-bedroom, two-bath in the backyard. You can put a sandbox in, you can put a swing setup, and you can walk to school for three hundred sixty thousand dollars. This is why people are coming here. I go to my next slide. We also just have the uh, 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 Taiwan Semiconductor uh, Chip Plant. That's under construction. Now, it started out at $12 billion. They've quadrupled it. It's going to be over $50 billion for the uh, for the project. And they're generating uh, uh, demand for other chips. So other chip manufacturers are now building right next to them. We've got eight more plants. 
This is going to bring in tens of thousands of high paid jobs just to this one section. This is over there right on top of this uh, this 303 that we talked about that the uh, Wall Street Journal is doing their uh, doing their documenting. Let me go on the next slide. I'll show you what else is going on. So we just had 4,000 acres in surprise get sold to the BNSF Railroad, and they are doing an intermodal transportation hub with rail and trucking, and they're going to employ thousands and thousands of people. Now, this is the future. This is where you can put your investment money. Get it out of Chicago. Get it out of Minneapolis. Get it out of Minnesota for $1,200. You should be able to do it. Uh, just If you've got an $800,000 property, you can sell it there, and you can buy another one here. Cost you twelve hundred bucks to do that. You want to buy two of them, and you can take eight hundred thousand and buy two houses here for four hundred thousand. That'll cost you sixteen hundred bucks. How inexpensive can that be? And your taxes will get deferred to the next properties, and you can restart some of your depreciation. It's just a great deal, and you get into areas like this. So let me just go to the next slide. We also just connected the the South Tool to. This is the expressway. They just went in. It's opening up all kinds of of land for development. And look at this, this is the next one. Now on the east side of our valley, DR Horton bought 270 square miles of vacant land, 270 square miles. It's larger than uh, four cities here. It's larger than Mesa, Gilbert, Tempe, and most of Chandler combined. It's an enormous, and that, that is the type of population they're expecting here. So you have all this available to you. Now, here's what my timing model is saying. I've been telling you and telling you, you know, when I talk to Dr. Nenner, he talks about what is going to happen, doesn't say why. So let's look at some of the why. But I'm telling you that our 18 year cycle for real estate, not housing, we've never talked about housing. We're talking about the real estate cycle is telling us that we're rolling over. It's completing. You know, on this one side here, on the left side, you know, when we go through the accumulation phase and the explosive phase, that is so much fun. Everybody is making money like crazy. You can't get enough real estate when you're at the happy hour and at cocktail parties. You're just boasting to everybody how much property you own. And now we're going to go on to this right side, and that is not fun at all. That is the exact mirror image of what, what up is now going to come down, and it's going to come down in a very ugly fashion. And it's underway. So this is Howard Lutnick from uh, Fitzgerald Can uh, uh, Cantor, and we're talking about the fact that he is expecting two to three years, maybe two years of very, very poor financing. Now, it's talking about the real estate market. This is the commercial real estate market. It's mimicking the 1980s, if you can understand it. 1980s, when, when the Congress, in their wisdom, changed depreciation from 15 years to 27 years and eliminated the uh, triple... Um, uh, accelerated depreciation, well, a lot of these buildings became non, no longer viable and people got rid of them and the cycle started to change and the real estate started completed and it completed in the commercial space, commercial real estate. This is part of the real estate cycle and that's happening right now. They are leading the way and you can see that a lot of these properties are uh, defaulting and the price and the, and the value of the commercial property is collapsing. So when you talk to Howard Lutnick from Cantor Fitzgerald, they're talking about $700 billion in commercial debt about to default. And that's going to go to local banks and it's going to go basically to regional banks and it's going to cause them problems. And it's just going to accelerate a uh, negative feedback loop. Now this is already happening. So Blackstone, you know, Blackstone, they're huge in this space. They've already defaulted on their Manhattan office building. They were experiencing a 19% vacancy. Now, this is part of the why. We're already telling you what's going to happen. This is part of the why. So that, that vacancy factor is going to double once the, once the leases are honored by the Fortune 500 companies that are leasing from places like this. They're honoring their lease. Even though no one is coming to the office, they're still on the hook for the lease. I'm going to tell you, once that lease is completed, vacancy is going to go crazy. So what happens to a building when the income plummets and the cap rates go up? The value of the property plummets. This one here for Blackstone was valued at $605 million in 2014. That's probably when they did the refinance. And now it was appraised for 175. 
So they have a $308 million mortgage that they are defaulting on, and it's already in market for $150. Yeah, you know they're gonna take they're gonna take a bloodbath on this stuff. This is happening all over in the commercial office space, part of the completion process for um, the real estate cycle. And I just got this uh, this morning. Here it is on the Chicago Magnificent Mile, 625 North Michigan is defaulting. $61 million. This is the Miracle Mile, Magnificent Mile in uh, in Chicago, one of the greatest retail centers in, in the world. And they're at a vacancy factor of 29%. They can't make it in the value of this property. goes away. They just turn their keys in. This is part of the real estate cycle, and it is collapsing. So if you'd like to get a consultation, if you'd like to talk about what we can do for you, how we can partner together, and we'll find the properties for you. We're going to find very, very good properties here. We have a huge rental uh, pool here. We have management. We have flat rate management. They only charge you one fee for about $100 to $120 a month. You can rent for $500. You can rent for $10,000 a month. They don't care. They're only going to charge you one flat fee. We have five property managers. We do that. We can handle this for you. We can locate the properties. We can we do 1031 exchanges. We understand uh, the, the rules and regulations. They're very easy. If you want to get hold of me, this is my number. We're more than happy to schedule a consultation. Let's do this. Let's get you out of those endangered cities. My very, very best to you guys. Bye-bye now.